The Proving of Abraham by Rita Benton. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Proving of Abraham. The People. Prologue and Epilogue. Read by Michelle Eaton. Abraham. Read by Larry Wilson. Isaac, his son. Read by Beth Thomas. The Messenger or Angel of God. Read by David Purdy. One or two servants. The place. Scene one is outside the tent of Abraham. Scene two is Mount Morai. The prologue takes the place of scenery or program. The properties. A chair or bench, a bundle of wood, a knife. The Proving of Abraham. The prologue, or the servant of Abraham, acting as prologue, enter and bows low, then, drawing himself erect, points to imaginary scenery. This is the tent of Abraham, the father of his people, where he lives with Sarai, his wife, and his son Isaac whom he loves above all else. I am the servant of Abraham. Lo, Abraham enters now with Isaac. The prologue goes. Abraham enters, leaning on Isaac. Isaac, pointing. My father, behold the lambs yonder. I, my son, they are for the sacrifice. I offer them up to God for a thank offering that he hath given thee to me, O my son. Seats himself. Isaac, clinging close to him. Dost thou love me more than the little lambs? Abraham, embracing him. I love thee more than all that is in heaven or earth. Isaac, struggling. My father, let me go. I would go play with the lambs. Abraham, releasing him. Then go, my son. Isaac runs out. Abraham remains seated. Then suddenly he starts, rises, and stands with his arms uplifted in prayer. Here am I, Lord. He listens with strong emotion. O Lord, Lord, what is this that thou dost require of me? Must I give up Isaac to thee, Isaac the joy of mine old age? There is a pause while he prays silently. Then he speaks humbly. Nevertheless, not my will, O Lord, but thine be done. There's another pause. Then he calls. Isaac! Isaac! Isaac runs in. Here am I, father. Get ye wood for a burnt offering, and saddle ye the ass, for I will go up upon the mount to sacrifice. I, father, and shall I go with thee? Thou shalt indeed go with me, thou and thy servant. Get thee gone. Isaac runs out. Not my will, O Lord, but thine. O Lord, I will trust in thee. Isaac enters, carrying a bundle of faggots. My father, all is ready. The ass is saddled, and I have here wood for the burnt offering. Abraham, placing his arms around him. Come, my son. They go slowly out. The prologue or servant enters. Behold. Now Abraham and Isaac approach the mountains of Moriah. I, the servant, follow after. He follows them. Abraham and Isaac, having made the circuit of the room, approach. This is the mountain on which I shall sacrifice. To servant. Abide thou yonder with the ass. I and the lad will worship. Then I will come again to thee. The servant bows and withdraws. My father? Here am I, my son. My father, behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? O oh, my son, God will provide the sacrifice. O oh, my son, before thou wert born, I longed for thee, and since thou wast a little lad, I have loved thee with a greater love than I have given my God. Now I am punished, for the Lord hath commanded me, saying, Take thou thy son, thine only son whom thou lovest, 
even Isaac, and offer him up for a burnt offering upon the mountains. O oh, my son, I shall do even as the Lord hath commanded me, for all his ways are perfect. Fare thee well. He embraces him. Isaac, fearfully. Father, father, I, I fear. Kneel thou upon the wood. Isaac kneels. Abraham raises his knife to slay. A voice calls from distance. Abraham, Abraham. Hark, oh my father, a voice calls, Abraham. Abraham, with knife still raised. Here, my lord. The messenger enters and stays Abraham's hand. O oh, Abraham, thus saith the Lord, Because thou hast put thy trust in me, therefore I will deliver thee. Lay not thine hand upon the lad, for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. Abraham, raising arms to heaven. O oh Lord, blessed be the man that trusteth in thee. Isaac, jumping. Lo, father, a ram is there caught in the thicket. Lo, I shall fetch the ram for sacrifice. He runs out. Moreover, thus saith the Lord God, In blessing I will bless thee, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, for I have proved thee. The messenger goes out. Isaac runs in with great excitement. My father, the ram is caught. I will carry the wood yonder. Runs out. O oh God, thou hast tried me and known me. O oh, see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Goes with arms upraised. The servant or epilogue advances. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. Epilogue. He goes out. End of The Proving of Abraham The People by Susan Glaspell This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The People Dramatis Personae Edward Wills, editor of The People Read by Todd Oscar Tripp, associate editor Read by Chuck Williamson The Artist Read by Abayi Sarah Read by Sonia Tom Howe, printer Read by Recording Person The Boy from Georgia Read by Philip Gould The Man from the Cape Read by David Olson The Woman from Idaho Read by Michelle Eaton The Earnest Approach Read by Larry Wilson The Light Touch Read by Sarah Hale The Anarchist Read by Thomas Peter The Philosopher Read by Alan Mapstone the People Scene The Office of The People A desk, a table, on which are manuscripts and magazines. On the walls are revolutionary posters. Wads of paper are thrown about on the floor. The office of a publication which is radical and poor. The curtain shows Oscar at one end of a table writing. There is a door rear, door left. Enter rear, Tom Howe, a galley proof in his hand. Why are you writing? Oscar, jauntily. Oh, because I am a writer. But I thought you said there wasn't going to be another issue of the people. I am writing. There's a woman here with a suitcase. What's in it? She wants to see the editor. Oscar, after writing a minute. Uh, all right. Exit Tom. Enter woman with suitcase. She is middle-aged, wears plain clothes not in fashion. Her manner is a little shrinking, and yet, as she stands in the doorway, looking about the bare room, her face is the face of one who has come a long way and reached a wonderful place. This is the office of the people. 
Mm -hmm. The woman, in a bated way. I came to see the author of those wonderful words. Oscar, rising. Uh, which wonderful words? About moving toward the beautiful distances. Oh, those are Mr. Wills's wonderful words. Begins to write as one who has lost interest. Could I see him? He isn't here yet. He's just back from California. Won't be at the office till a little later. The woman, in a manner of repressed excitement. He has been to California. He has just ridden across this country. Yes long trip it was very cross over the phone oh no i think you're mistaken anything you care to see me about the woman after considering i could see him a little later couldn't i yes if it's important of course he'll be very busy it is important at least yes it is important very well then later in the morning the woman thinking aloud i will not stand down on the street and watch the people go by what the people it's so wonderful to see them so many of them don't you often just stand and watch them no madam not often i am too busy editing a magazine about them of course you are busy you help edit the magazine looks about at the posters I am associate editor of the people. That's a great thing for you, and you so young. Does Mr. Wills write in this room? That is his desk. The woman, looking at the desk. It must be a wonderful thing for you to write in the same room with him. Well, I don't know. Perhaps it is a wonderful thing for him to... I am Oscar Tripp, the poet. It would be beautiful to be a poet. I will come back later. Picks up suitcase. Just leave that if you aren't going to be using it in the meantime. The woman, putting it down near the door. Oh, thank you. I see that you are a kind young man. Uh, that is not the general opinion. I wonder why it is that the general opinion is often so wrong. Dan's considering it for a moment then goes out. I don't quite understand that woman. Enter Tom Howe, printer. If this paper can't go on, I ought to know it. I could get a job in the evening world. Oscar continues writing. Can it go on? I don't see how it can, but many a time I haven't seen how it could, and it did. Doubtless it will go on, and see days so much worse than these that we will say, ah, the good old days of 1917. But can it pay salaries? Oh, no, I think not. But we must work because we love our work. We must eat because we love our food. You'll know soon. There's to be a meeting here this morning. Enter Sarah. Tom goes out. Sarah is dressed like a young businesswoman and has the simple, direct manner of a woman who is ready to work for a thing she believes in. Ed not here yet? No. Did he get any money? Doesn't look like it. He was snappish over the phone. Guess he's for giving it up this time. I don't want to give it up. She sits at the table and unfolds a manuscript she has brought with her. Well, it's not what we want, it's what the people want. And there aren't enough of them who want us. The fault must lie with us. I don't think so. The fault lies with the failure to... The artist has entered. I'll tell you where the fault lies. We should give more space to pictures and less to stupid reading matter. Takes a seat at the table. We have given too much expensive white paper to pictures and too little to reading matter, especially to poetry. That's... Where the fault lies. Enter Edward Wills, editor. I'll tell you where the fault lies. Points first to the artist, then to Oscar. Here, just this. 
everybody plugging for his own thing. Nobody caring enough about the thing as a whole. Oscar, rising. I'll tell you where the fault lies. Points to Ed. Here. This. The editor-in-chief returns from a long trip, and the first golden words that fall from his lips are the words of censure for his faithful subordinates. How are you, Ed? Rotten. I hate sleeping cars. I always catch cold. Any luck? Ed, his hand around his ear. What's the word? Enter. The earnest approach. I have heard that you may have to discontinue. Ed, sitting down at his desk, beginning to look through his mail. It seems we might as well. Now just let me tell you what the trouble has been and how you can remedy it. The people has been afraid of being serious. But you deal with ideas, and you must do it soberly. There is a place for a good earnest journal of protest, but all this levity, this fooling. Enter, light touch. Came in to see you, Ed, to say I hope the news I'm hearing isn't true. If it's bad, it's true. Well, it's an awful pity, but you have been too damn serious. A lighter touch, that's what the people need. You are as heavy as mud. Try to while longer along frivolous lines. I was in the building, and just ran in to let you have my idea of what's the matter with you. <sighs> if we had as many subscribers as we have people to tell us what's the matter with us. Enter Philosopher and Anarchist. Printer follows them in, a page of manuscript in his hand. Now the Philosopher and the Anarchist will tell us what's the matter with us. Too damn bourgeois. You should print on the cover of every issue. To hell with the bourgeoisie. Pigs. The trouble with this paper is efficiency. They start to rise in their chairs. The printer falls back against the wall, then staggers out of the room. Dear God, there are things it seems to me I cannot bear. It should be more carelessly done, and then it would be more perfectly done. You should be less definite, and you would have more definiteness. You should not know what it is you want, and then you would find what you are after. You talk as if we had not been a success. But just last night I heard of a woman in Bronxville who keeps the people under her bed, so her husband won't know she's reading it. If you had been a success, you would have fired that woman with so great a courage that she would proudly prop the people on the pillow. Artist, who is sketching the anarchist. It was my pictures got us under the bed. I was definitely told it was my last talk with God put us under the bed. Can you not see that she puts you under the bed because you yourselves have made concessions to the bourgeoisie? Cows, geese. Artist who has been sketching the anarchist. It should print more pictures. It must print more poetry. They glare at one another. It should be more serious. It should be more frivolous. Enter the boy from Georgia, dressed like a freshman with a good allowance. Is this the office of the people? No, this is a lunatic asylum. The boy, after a bewildered moment, Oh, you're joking. You know, I wondered about that, whether you would joke here. I thought you would. Stepping forward. I came to see the editor. I want to tell him. So many people are telling me so many things. Could you tell me yours a little later? Oh, yes. Of course, there must be many important things people have to tell you. Well, many. Boy goes out rear, reluctantly. Artist, who has all the time been glaring at Oscar. Speaking for the artists, I want to say right now... Speaking for the writers, 
i wish to say before we go further a more serious approach a lighter touch speaking for the anarchists speaking for the truth phone rings oscar enters enter the man from the cape slow heavy you have come to tell us something about this paper yes there are a number ahead of you will you wait your turn a look of disappointment i'll be glad to see you as soon as i can there in the outside office motioning door rear a moment the man stands there a mute ponderous figure then very slowly goes out oscar hanging up the receiver or its paper company bill got to be paid today and here takes from his drawer a huge packet of bills you could pay your bills if you were not afraid to be serious you could pay your bills if you were not afraid to be gay from the door very solemnly a more earnest approach would save the people a lighter touch would turn the trick exeunt anarchist going over and pounding on editor's desk to hell with the bourgeoisie apes efficiency has put out the spark well as long as the spark appears to be good and out may i in the name of efficiency ask you who do not belong here to retire that we may go ahead with our work there would be greater efficiency in our remaining there would be form you have lacked form you have lacked courage donkeys it would be illuminating leo to hear you run through the animal kingdom toads crocodiles a number of things you haven't mentioned yet but the animal kingdom is large and we have work to do you lack form in your work by form i do not mean what you think i mean i mean that particular significance of the insignificant which is the fundamental we wouldn't understand it why tell us no goes to door you couldn't understand it exit rest in peace gesture of benediction then from the door hissingly centipedes exit all laugh what's the matter with us is our friends well to be or not to be i guess it's up to you ed just what would we be going on for to make a few more people like the dear ones who have just left us seems to me we could best serve society by not doing that precisely what do we do aside from getting under the bed in bronxville now and then something particularly rotten is put over and we have a story that gets a rise out of a few people but we don't change anything we had another hope we were going to express ourselves so simply and so truly that we would be expressing the people the people i looked at them all the way across this continent oh i got so tired looking at them on farms in towns in cities they're like toys that you wind up and they'll run a while they don't want to be expressed it would topple them over the longer i looked the more ridiculous it seemed to me that we should be giving our lives to picks up the magazine and reads the people a journal of the social revolution certainly we better cut the subtitle the social revolution is dead you don't think you are bringing back any news do you ed artist takes up the magazine instead of a subtitle we could have a design much better glares at oscar then begins to draw this is a long way from what you felt a year ago ed you had a vision then you can't keep vision in this office it's easy enough to have a beautiful feeling about the human race when none of it is around the trouble about doing anything for your fellow man is that you have to do it with a few of them oh of course that isn't fair we care i'll say that for us even oscar cares or he wouldn't work the way he has but what does our caring come to it doesn't connect up with anything and god knows it doesn't seem to be making anything very beautiful of us 
There's something rather pathetic about us. Or is it merely ridiculous? Let me read you something, Ed. Takes up the magazine. Reads very simply. We are living now. We shall not be living long. No one can tell us we shall live again. This is our little while. This is our chance. And we take it like a child who comes from a dark room to which he must return. Comes for one sunny afternoon to a lovely hillside and, finding a hole, crawls in there till after the sun is set. I want that child to know the sun is shining upon flowers in the grass. I want him to know it before he has to go back to the room that is dark. I wish I had pipes to call him to the hilltop of beautiful distances. I myself could see further if he were seeing at all. Perhaps I can call you, you who have dreamed, and dreaming know and knowing care. Move, move from the things that hold you. If you move, others will move. Come, now, before the sun goes down. You wrote that, Ed. Yes, I wrote it. And do you want to know why I wrote it? I wrote it because I was sore at Oscar and wanted to write something to make him feel ashamed of himself. While Thower is reading, the woman has appeared at the door and has moved in a few steps into the room as if drawn by the words she is hearing. Behind her are seen the boy from Georgia, the man from the Cape, the woman moving forward. I don't believe that's true. I don't believe that's true. Maybe you think that's why you wrote it, but it's not the reason. You wrote it because it's the living truth, and it moved in you, and you had to say it. Ed, rising. Who are you? I am one of the people. I have lived a long way off. I heard that call, and I had to come. I've come, too. I'm from Georgia. I read it, and I didn't want to stay at school any longer. I said, I want something different and bigger, something more like this. I heard about your not being able to sell your paper on the newsstands just because lots of people don't want anything different and bigger. And I said to myself, I'll sell the paper. I'll go and sell it on the streets. And I got so excited about it that I didn't even wait for the dance. There was a dance that night. And I had my girl, too. He didn't even wait for the dance. The idealists are calling upon the intellectuals and calling them. Ed, to the man. And what did you leave, my friend? The man, heavily. My oyster bed. I'm from the Cape. I had a chance to go in on an oyster bed. I read what you wrote. A woman who had stopped in an automobile left it, and I said to myself, I'm nothing but an oyster myself. Guess I'll come to life. But what did you come here for? Well, for the rest of it. The rest of what? The rest of what you've got. Yes, that's it. We've come for the rest of what you've got. This is awkward for Ed. Give it to us. What? The rest of it. I haven't got anything more to give. But you made us think you had. You led us to believe you had. And you have. If you hadn't more to give, you couldn't have given that. Very awkward. You said I call to you. You who have dreamed, and dreaming know, and knowing care. Well, three of us are here, from the south and the east and the west. We've come because you made us want something we didn't have. Made us want it so much we had to move the way we thought was towards it, before the sun goes down. We thought people here had life, something different and bigger. Perhaps we'd better go. Poor Ed. I wish you'd shut up, Oscar. I know you will give it to us. Give what to you? What you have for the people. Oscar coughs. What you made us know we need. You shouldn't have called personally. You should have sent in your needs by mail. Oscar, 
Try and act as if you had a soul. I think he really has. A look at Oscar, then warmly. At least he has a heart. It's only that he feels he must be witty. But you, you're not going to let us just go away again, are you? He gave up his oyster bed, and this boy didn't even wait for the dance, and me, I gave up my tombstone. Your? Yes, tombstone. It had always been a saying in our family. He won't even have a stone to mark his grave. They said it so much and so solemnly that I thought it meant something. I sew, plain sewing, but I've often said to myself, well, at least I'll have a stone to mark my grave. And then there was a man who'd been making speeches to the miners. I live in a town in Idaho, and he had your magazine, and he left it in the store, and the storekeeper said to me when I went there for thread, here, you like to read, don't you want this? I wish you would take it away, because if some folks in this town see it, they'll think I'm not all I should be. He meant the cover. The artist, writing. That was my cover. The woman, after a smile at the artist. So I took it home, and when my work was done that night, I read your wonderful words. They're like a spring. If you've lived in a dry country, you'll know what I mean. And they made me know that my tombstone was as dead as, well. With a little laugh. As dead as a tombstone so I had to have something to take its place. Sarah, rising and going to the woman. Talk to him. Tell him about it. Come, Oscar. As long as there seems to be so much uncertainty about this, perhaps I'd better telegraph father. You see, the folks don't know where I am. I just came. He didn't even stay for the dance. I'll be glad to sell the papers a pile of them on the table. Here, shall I take these? And I'll stop people on the street and tell why I'm selling them. No, you can't do that. You'd be arrested. Let him sell them. What's the difference about the law, if you have the right idea? The right idea has given us trouble enough already. There's something sure about an oyster bed. You come with me and have a drink. Something sure about that, too. He could have had a drink at home. Sarah, to the artist. Coming, Joe? To the boy. It was corking of you to want to help us. We must talk about... All go out except the woman and the editor. A pause. I am sorry for you. Why? The woman, feeling her way, and sadly. Because you have the brain to say those things and not the spirit to believe them. I couldn't say them, and yet I've got something you haven't got. Because I know the thing you said was true. Will you sit down? No, I'll go. Stands there uncertainly. I don't know why I should be disappointed. I suppose it's not fair to ask you to be as big as the truth you saw. Why should I expect you would be? I'm sorry. I suppose now you'll regret your tombstone. No, it was wonderful to ride across this country and see all the people. The train moving along seemed to make something move in me. I had thoughts not like any thoughts I've ever had before. Your words like a spring breaking through the dry country of my mind. I thought of how you call your paper a journal of the social revolution, and I said to myself, this is the social revolution. Knowing that your tombstone doesn't matter. Seeing. That's the social revolution. Seeing? The woman, as if it is passing before her. A plain, dark trees off at the edge, against the trees a little house and a big barn. A flat piece of land fenced in. Stubble, furrows, horses waiting to get in at barn. Cow standing around a pump, a tile yard, a water tank, one straight street of a little town, the country so still it seemed dead, the trees like hopes that have given up, the graveyards on hills, they come so fast. I noticed them first because of my tombstone, 
but i got to thinking about the people the people who spent their whole lives right near the places where they are now there's something in the thought of them like the cows standing around the pump so still so patient it kind of hurts and their pleasures a flat field fenced in your great words carried me to other great words i thought of lincoln and what he said of a few of the dead i said it over and over i said things and didn't know the meaning of them till after i had said them i said the truth the truth the truth that opens from our lives as water opens from the rocks then i knew what that truth was pause with an intensity peculiarly simple let us here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain i mean all of them a gesture wide loving let life become what it may become so beautiful that everything that is back of us is worth everything it costs enter tom printer i've got uh feeling something strange sorry to butt in but i can still get that job on the evening world if this paper is going to stop i've got to know it stop this paper can't stop can't stop last i heard it couldn't do anything else that was long ago oh you've uh, got something to go on with yes something to go on with i see looks at woman as if he didn't see glances at her suitcase I'm glad, but I've got to be sure. This is the truth? The truth. The truth that opens from our lives as water opens from the rocks. Tom backs up. The woman, turning a shining face to the printer. Nobody really needs a tombstone. Curtain. End of The People <laughs>